Hello again. I spoke yesterday about the way in which ordinary archaeology and history are being affected by what we might term a cultural taking of the knee, to use a modern expression. Um, in other words, the, the behaviour and way of talking and use of language of the overwhelming majority of the population are being altered to avoid upsetting or causing offence or annoyance to a small minority. I want, I'll explore in further detail tomorrow how this has affected history, but today I want to talk about how it's um, creeping into the teaching of mathematics. This goes sometimes by the name of ethnomathematics and other times by the term rehumanising maths. You can Google both expressions and you'll see what's going on. The thesis advanced is that most of the mathematics that we have, that we use, was the creation of white men. And that this is putting some ethnic minorities off from learning it. And it's also being suggested that this um, cultural bias, as it's sometimes called, might be the reason why um, black pupils tend to do more poorly at mathematics than some other ethnicities. The American city of Seattle has adopted a very proactive stance in this field, but a lot of other uh, districts are due to follow. Uh, and in Britain too, ethno-mathematics and rehumanising maths are both poised to take off in the next few years. Okay, these are just words. I dare say that people want some concrete examples of what I'm talking about, because I mean, just using vague expressions like ethno-mathematics doesn't really teach us anything. Africa has been scoured for anything that looks even remotely like mathematics, um, so it can be worked into lessons. The Dogon tribe in Mali are uh, the poster boys for this trend. I don't know if anyone remembers, in the 1970s, a book was published in, by a British author, which uh, started the idea that the Dogons had knowledge of um, stars and so on, which could only have been provided to them by aliens from outer space. It was a kind of British version of um, Eric von Daniken's Chariot of the Gods. Later on, uh, 10, 15 years later, the idea of the aliens was dropped and instead it became, the, uh, the idea was promoted that the Dogons themselves were brilliant astronomers and mathematicians in the past, way ahead of their time and the head in some ways of the people in Europe. Um, when we talk about mathematics, we're not talking in the boring old sense of working out square roots or calculating pi to a hundred places or using calculus or anything of that sort. Dogon mathematics is more spiritual than that, which makes it ideal for, um, it's a good field for charlatans to move into. This lack of precision or need for accuracy makes Dogon mathematics ideal for um, rehumanising maths and for ethno-mathematics because there's no right or wrong in it. It's so vague and woolly that everyone can study it and do well without um, having to worry about getting their marks wrong or any of those old-fashioned Eurocentric ideas. I'll tell you what I'll do. I've um, put a typical paper up on the um, description of this video. I've given the link there. I really urge people to read it for themselves before it reaches the local schools. Click on the link, read the paper. Um, in the meantime, I'm, I'll just read out the conclusions and we'll see whether or not anything useful is said. Okay, this is the conclusion of a paper on Dogon mathematics and ethno mathematics, and this is the theory behind the practice. It is now reaching classrooms. Are we ready? I believe that ethno mathematics is concerned with structural communion 
and deals with an accurate universal significance that reveals a profound proximity of transcultural thought and feeling. It points out a convergence of psychoconceptual directional forces where past and present meet and inspires a methodological dynamic approach that discloses a new world of possibilities of interaction between cognitive cultural anthropology and mathematics education through a hermeneutical approach. Well, I hope that's all clear. I don't think I'm particularly a stupid person. I mean, I might be getting old, this might be a sign of senility, but I literally do not have the remotest idea what that all meant. And I read it through carefully as well. I seriously doubt if what she is hoping to teach, I mean, this is, this is the theoretical background for math lessons in schools. I seriously doubt if any of that is going to be as useful to the average school pupil as a grasp of percentages or the ability to multiply one number by another. Another icon of ethno-mathematics, besides Dogon spirituality, is a baboon bone covered in scratches. This bone found um, about 60 years ago in what is now Zaire is supposed to provide evidence that 20,000 years ago sub-Saharan Africans understood the concept of prime numbers. I think I ought to do a separate video on this because it's become a little bit of um, a separate cult on its own. I've given only the briefest outline here of the idea of ethno-mathematics, but I really think it'd be a good thing for people, particularly parents with children at school, to look into this a little bit because everything I've read on the subject, all the texts, and I'm talking now about peer-reviewed journals and uh, academic books, it's all incomprehensible. I can't make head and a tail of it. It's words strung together. The words themselves are English, but they don't actually mean anything. Start by reading the one that I give a link to above, and I'd be very interested in any comments people have to make. I'm going to be exploring this matter in greater depth in the future because it's very important. The teaching of mathematics is simply so vital that anything that allows it to become fuzzy is undesirable in itself. And to see mathematics subverted in this way is really, really alarming.